Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And I'm here today to talk about depression. I know that there's a lot of us that have at some point in our life suffered with depression or are even dealing with it right now. It tends to be more prevalent in the winter for several reasons. And you know, one of those being a lack of vitamin D can do that. It can kind of send you into a depression. You know, because you're not, and just, sun just makes us happy in general. So when you're not getting enough sun, that can do that to you. So if you live in a place that's not constantly raining or too freezing cold, the more sun you can get, the better that's going to be. And then, of course, I recommend, as I've mentioned in other videos, making sure you're taking a good vitamin D3, at least, supplement. Um, and then, you know, getting vitamin D in your diet as much as you can through natural, you know, other ways, you know, through your food products and stuff like that. Healthy, good, organic foods. But the kind of depression I'm talking about is the one that goes much deeper than that. And I, I initially had somebody who had recently contacted me that as a follower that has been dealing with this. And I have to say that I can totally relate to this. I have been in the deep, dark bowels of a horrible depression in the past. Now this was, oh, well over 15 years ago. I'd say closer to, what is it, maybe about 20, 25 years ago that uh, I was dealing with this. And it went on for about a year, but the worst of it really only lasted a few months. But thankfully, I managed to get out of it. And I want to talk about how do you go about getting yourself out of depression that doesn't involve going to the doctor and getting on antidepressants. That's the, actually the worst thing you can do. Just look at what the side effects of antidepressants are. Depression and suicidal thoughts. Like, that's what you need. And at that time, because that was so long ago, I didn't know what to do. And I did go to the doctor about some other things, but while I was there, I was talking about, I think that was when they first diagnosed me with low thyroid. And of course, along with that, whatever the health issues that were really going on there that were causing my thyroid to be sluggish, that one of the side effects of a low thyroid is also depression. That, that's one of the main side effects. And then you get weight gain. And then the weight gain causes more depression. And the more depressed you get, the more weight you put on. And so it's like this spiraling cycle that just, I've used the word vortex before. And to me, that's, that's what it felt like. It felt like I was being sucked into this vortex that no matter what I did, it, I couldn't break free from it. And it just kept spiraling down and down and down and getting worse and worse. So at that time, the doctor did prescribe antidepressants. And back then, I didn't know anything about them. And I wasn't, even though I really hated the idea of going on them, though, because I still was had an aversion to medications in general. But I thought, well, maybe if this is what I need, I'll just go ahead and give it a try. But I, I really felt like I was giving up and not trying hard enough by doing that. Well, the just as is as the indications tell you, it made me worse. And not only that, it just made me feel weird and loopy and strange. And so I only stayed on them for a few weeks and then I weaned myself off on my own because I'm like, this isn't right. This isn't right at all. And I'm not doing this. Now, besides all the natural ways, you know, we can go on about the vitamin D and all the many things, you know, other things that you can do to help ease the depression. But what I realized for myself, I mean, you know, I'm, it's kind of, this is hard for me because I, it, it's one of, it's such a dark point in my life. I don't really like talking about it that much. On the other hand, I feel that if anything I can share can help somebody else who's dealing with that and it just know that there are people like myself that have been there. We know that feeling. And when people tell you, well, just think positively, it makes you kind of want to punch them in the face because it's not like you don't try to think positively. It's not like you just sit around and look for reasons to be depressed. That's not it. 
and people who've never had to deal with that don't get it and they're trying to be helpful just remember that when people say well think positive or just stop being so negative uh, just be patient with them too and make and realize that they don't get it if they're talking that way they simply don't understand so don't lo lose your cool and just understand that they are trying to help you by saying that things even though saying that tends to make you feel even worse right so those people who've never had to deal with depression when someone's going through it don't tell them that that's not going to help it's just going to make them feel worse i know you're you know you think you're doing the right thing but it is only going to make it worse but there is still some truth to the thinking positive that um but it's it's not just about thinking positive it's it's more of an action it's making a choice to i'm gonna change i'm i'm gonna pull my i'm gonna pick myself up pull up my boots pull up my big girl pants or big boy pants or whatever it is and i'm gonna face this thing head on depression is a normal part of life for everybody at some point whether it be a loss of a job or a loss of a loved one that can that's going to be a normal natural depression you're going to go through and that's expected and if we try to numb ourselves through drugs and alcohol that's not going to help us get through it that's only going to prolong it and it's not it doesn't make us stronger people when we do that and certainly not relying on on uh, antidepressants to do that for us it's again I, I gotta say this again that's the worst thing you can do even if you don't have the uh the deeper depression and the suicidal thoughts that often go along with that um what it might do is just make you completely numb where you have no feelings at all i've seen that happen to people too i know i know someone pretty close to me that went on antidepressants for a while and this was someone who was who was a very uh, sensitive and caring kind of person that uh, if you cried they cried with you that kind of person well when they were on the antidepressants that was gone it wasn't even like they were the same person anymore you felt like you couldn't go talk to them and have them sympathize or empathize with you it, it was uh, it was just so cold and so that's not a desirable uh, place to be either especially not for those around you that uh, you know that need need to be nurtured and cared for so anyway how do you pick yourself up by the bootstraps how how do you do it okay hang hang on with me a little bit if you're atheist and you don't believe and you're not believers because this isn't going to be just about christianity but to the christians i do have to say this if you are a believer, you do have to put your faith and trust in God and pray every day for guidance and help. And he will be there for you. He doesn't want you to stay there. And the Bible does talk about, you know, thinking on the good and the pure things. So there, even as cold as and simple as that, that phrase that makes you want to punch people in the face, when they say, think more positive, you do have to realize God does tell us to do that and we do have to make that choice but beyond that there's more to it than just that and so what what i realized i was going to have to do is, and, and here's here's where i was i was I, I didn't finish saying this this is how this is how bad i was i could not go out in public at all i mean i'm naturally an introvert and that's fine it's fine to have your times where you just you just would rather stay home and be a homebody and get your stuff done and not have to deal with people. That's that's just an introvert. That's what I am. Some people that watch me on YouTube all the time may be surprised. I am very, very much an introvert. But that doesn't mean I don't like company. That doesn't mean I don't like visiting with people and enjoy talking to people because I do. It just means that I don't always like to do that every day. That would be exhausting. But when i was in that depression i couldn't stand to leave the house at all i hated going to the store i didn't like going to church i couldn't do anything and just knowing at least this this was the part that thankfully was pretty short-lived i mean it got so bad i was having panic attacks so i think that was that was just during the time they had me on those stupid uh antidepressants and i didn't know what a panic attack was I think I'd heard of it, but I had no idea what it was until I experienced one for the first time. And I have to tell you, it was I didn't know what it was. I didn't know what was wrong with me. It was scary. 
you know, because your heart starts beating fast and pounding out of your chest and you're shaking and, and uh, you know, you feel that tightening happening and that's scary. You don't know what's going on. So I, I experienced those too. Again, thankfully, not very many and I managed to get away from all that and get better in a, short, a fairly short period of time once I figured out what was going on. But so here I was, here was me, that if I knew I had to go anywhere to any kind of, whether it be run into the store to get a couple of items or going to church or going to some other public event, I would actually go to my room, shut the door and cry for a half an hour. And my poor husband and kids didn't know what to think. But that was how I had to cope because I just, the whole idea of having to leave the house and be around people was just, it was so terrifying to me and so awful. But for some reason, and this isn't what I'm recommending to do, but for some reason doing that, just giving myself a chance to cry and just kind of get it all out and calm myself did help. I still hated every minute of it, being out in public. But yeah, that, that wasn't what got me out of the depression. That was just how I, I was, the only way I had to cope with it at all, with being able to, do, with having to be around people. And then when I would go out in public, I could not look people in the eye. I would stare at the ground. I would, I would try to make myself as small and invisible as possible. I, I just, I didn't want to see anyone. I didn't want to talk to anyone. Mostly it's not that I didn't want to see them. I didn't want them to see me. I hated myself. Um, I, yeah, it, it was just an awful place to be. And one day, I think it was during a time where I was just in those mo one of those moments where I was just crying out to God and I was I was just pleading for help because I didn't know what to do and I didn't know who to talk to I didn't have anyone around me that was that had dealt with this kind of thing and knew what kind of advice to give me and I can only assume it was the Holy Spirit that told me this but whatever you know call it what you want but I believe it was from the Lord because I prayed, I prayed for help and what I knew I had to do. I, I had to take a hold of this. And every time I, had, I went out in public or I had to go anywhere, I had to make the conscious, conscious effort to keep my chin up, literally, keep my chin up, don't do this, don't stare at the ground, look people in the eye and say hello. Say hello first and find something that you can honestly give them a compliment on and smile and even if you don't feel like it, smile at people. Be, be someone who gives, you know, because maybe that person that's, that you're walking by that's passing you in the aisle in the store, maybe they're going through their own hard times and depression and they just need someone to smile at them. And so instead of, of thinking about how awful we feel, we got to think, you know what? Somebody out there probably feel, does feel as awful as I do. They're just not talking about it. Or maybe I don't know who they are. And the very first day I did that, the very first day, I, I was amazed at the change. I was amazed at what happened. Just one day. I'm not saying I was completely healed in one day, but that was the start of some, that was the start. That was what really was the catalyst to bring me out of that and pull me out of it and fairly quickly. It still took a lot of healing and time, but the worst of it was over quickly. When I made that conscious effort to be a positive influence on other people, not so much worrying about thinking positively myself, but being some kind of positivity to somebody else. And I'll never forget that first person, I was walking by in a store and I was scared and, and I was still having that horrible feeling, but I, I made it a point to look them in the eye and smile and say, hello. And they seemed a little surprised and they looked at me and they smiled, just this, this amazing, glorious, genuine smile that just, um, that one smile 
was enough to make me realize this is what I need to do because it had such a positive effect back on me. You know, it's like shining a light on a bright wall and then it shines back on you. That's kind of what it seemed like to me. And I don't like always using silly analogies, but I don't know how else to describe it. And if I saw a lady in the produce aisle and I thought her blouse was really pretty, I, you know, sometimes I would just look for something in people to, to manage to be able to talk to them and say something positive to them. That's a really beautiful blouse you have on. Or I love that skirt. Or, you know, maybe they're in there with their kids, especially if their kids are, are misbehaving because that's kids. They're gonna misbehave. They're gonna test their boundaries. Giving that mom some positive feedback. You're doing a good job, mom. Or even, <laughs> or just, you know what? Your kids are just, you have such adorable kids. Whatever it is. Um, just be genuine and be honest. I mean, don't make something up if you don't mean it. Just be honest with people. Be positive, but be honest too. Because that's, the feedback that you're going to get is not, I mean, the thing is, is not only are you doing something for that person and giving them that little boost that they may really need. Maybe that, that mom with the kids is just, she's at her wit's end and she's so frustrated and she just needs to know that somebody understands and somebody still thinks her kids are adorable despite their misbehavior. Uh, I can remember one time Patrick and I were in a restaurant and uh, we thought our kids were misbehaving because we were pretty strict. And, you know, we, we expect our kids to not be disruptive and, you know, sit in a restaurant and be little gentlemen. And it was just one of those days where it just kind of felt to us that our kids were just being naughty and we're getting frustrated and not really enjoying our our meal and an older couple that had been sitting uh, across from us had been watching the whole thing and when they got up to leave they said you guys are doing a great job of parenting and that's all I needed that's all we needed right then it's like really you know here we're feeling like our kids are just being decided to pick that one day to be really obnoxious and and yet I really needed to hear that. And so those little things, when you can do that for other people, it, it, it's, it's having a positive effect on them and it's having a positive effect right back at you. It's that whole idea of, you know, you do unto others. You know, the whole golden rule that comes right from scripture, love your neighbor as you love yourself. And that's where that comes from. Do unto others as you would want others to do unto you. And I tell you, that one little change, I could not believe just making that one little change, the difference it made in me and how quickly, oh, you know, the, the time that it took for me to pull myself little by little out of that depression, though it was still in baby steps, so, so to speak, it still happened a lot quicker than I ever would have expected. And with that, then because I had a more, po as I began to feel a more positive outlook about myself, it made getting a hold of my health and my weight loss so much easier. It, it just, bam, yeah, I couldn't believe the difference. Anyway, that's what worked for me. Now, I don't, I don't want to say that, uh, again, I'm no doctor of any kind. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a psychologist. I'm just an average human being that's had her own hard times and various things that I've had to deal with and I've had to find through prayer and guidance and his word and any other place I could how to deal with the different things, different health issues, you know, the thyroid and the, and the depression and so on and so forth. And, you know, God has always been good. And he's always got me through it. And even in those hard times, these hard times that you go through, no matter what it is, whether it be dealing with the death of a family member, um, whether it be dealing with a job loss that makes you feel afraid and wondering what your, fu your future has to hold, or dealing with depression or anything else, all of these things, you can choose to allow them to become good in some way, to bring good in some way. And that is you learn through the experience. You don't just dwell on, oh, this bad mistake I made or whatever, and have that always bring you down and you're an awful person. We've all made mistakes. We've all done wrong things that have hurt other people. And we've all had to deal with hard times of some sort. 
but we have to make the choice. Instead of letting those things tear us down, we have to make a choice to say, I'm going to allow God, or if you don't believe in God, I am going to myself find a way to use this to help somebody else. And that's what I'm trying to do right here with kind of being a little more candid with you about some things I've had to deal with and how horrible that is. I am hoping that by doing this, I can reach somebody else. Even if it's just one person that's in the middle of that dark cloud of depression and you feel like, and you feel like you can't get out. You feel like there's no way out and there's no light at the end of the tunnel to be seen. But it is there. It is there. You have to choose to see it and you have to choose to get through it. And um, it will happen. It will happen. And you can do it without going on those horrible medications that will only make it worse. And if you're on those medications, I beg you to to get off them. You can't just stop them, if you, especially if you've been on them for a while. You need to wean yourself off of them. Because if you just quit, if you just quit cold turkey, that's even worse yet. Uh, that's why a lot of these people that have psychotic episodes, that's what happened is they quit taking their, their medications and then they went crazy because it, your body's dependent on it now. And so you have to wean yourself off of it slowly. And during that time, then take on these other measures of helping others and so on and so forth that I spoke about. So again, if I can just reach one person with that and help one person, then it's worth it to me to be so candid and open and honest with you. And I pray that I do help, that this does help somebody. I pray that God is that God works through me to speak to some of you that really need to hear this message. And so again, for you believers out there, seek God read his word, listen to his word, if nothing else, just listen to it and, and ask him to speak to you through his word and he will do it. Cause that's one thing. That's one of his promises is that when we ask God for wisdom, he will give it to us liberally. And it's one of my current favorite scriptures. I love that one so much. And I will put it at the end of this video so that you can read that. And then, of course, surround yourself with people that you know love you no matter what you're going through. Even if they don't always have the right words for you, know that they love you and that anything that they're trying to do is to help you. And, and uh, just take it. Take it as, a, as it is meant and then give back in a kindness. Say thank you. Thank you so much or whatever it is. Just I love you. Whatever it is to them because that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to help. Don't punch them in the face. <laughs> I hope and pray that somebody found this video helpful and or at least that maybe you know someone that this can help. And I know it may not be the answer to for everyone, but it is what worked for me. And I do believe you can all do it, that we can all get through it at some, somehow, in some way. Just don't lose hope. Okay, thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.